Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Angie from the Second Chance Wildlife Center. Hello. Hello. What do we have here? We have a skunk here, a domestic skunk. He's actually our educational skunk. What do you mostly use him for? We use it for programs in schools and state parks because he's a docile skunk that didn't come from the wild. So he's a little bit easier to handle and he's good around people. What kind of skunk is this? This is just your basic striped skunk, which we have in Pennsylvania. You can see he has stripes that start up by his nose and they break into two stripes down his back. And sometimes they even go up into the tail. And skunks don't have good eyesight. They don't have good hearing. They have poor little eye, little tiny eyes, um, little tiny ears, accentuated face, which means great sense of smell. So that's what he relies on for his food. And if you notice, he's got huge claws. If I were to put him down on the ground right now, dirt would be flying and he'd be underground because skunks like to dig. And that's how they find their food sources, which are grubs, small animals, things like that. What do you feed this skunk? This guy gets fruits, vegetables, and he also gets dog food as a mainstay of his diet. You say you can find these around here, but like, um, where in the country can you find these? Just about skunks? anywhere. I mean, skunks will live under sheds. They'll live under people's porches and decks. Um, anywhere in the city, in the rural areas, you'll find skunks. Usually when you find one skunk, there's several other skunks there. And I tell people don't move them out because more will just move into that very nice location that these guys live in. So when you get a lot of people trapping skunks out, especially now isn't a good time because there's babies behind. And you don't want to leave babies without a mother to feed them. What kind of, what do they use this coloration for? Um, coloration doesn't really mean much. I mean, you might get black and white in the wild. You might get white with black stripes. You can get some brown skunks, some pure white skunks. So really the colors don't really mean anything, but everyone equates skunks with black and white and, and stripes. And different stripe patterns, um, some will have very, very thin stripes. The thinner stripes on a skunk is actually, um, the, or the more black the pelt is, is actually worth more in the fur trade. Is that like something concerning the skunk's population? Um, not really, not really. Color doesn't really mean anything or it doesn't, doesn't distinguish them from one area to another. It just is, you know, part of their, just, just their color variations and people see all different colors of skunks. So as everyone probably knows out there, like skunks have a bad smell to them. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Skunks actually spray through two glands that are back by their tail. So if you think of a clock and you think of three o'clock and nine o'clock, that's where the scent glands land, lay back here by the rectum. So what a skunk will do is he'll stomp first and he'll look at you. And if you're not paying attention, he's gonna start turning his butt towards you and lifting his tail. And that's kind of his warning. If you're not paying attention, he's gonna spray you. And you can spray 16 feet right for your eyes because he's gonna to try to blind you. So while you're in pain and you're having this skunk spray in, in your face, he's gonna get away. So the skunk spray is like a car, uh, sulfur dioxide. It's like a rotten egg in oil. That's why it's difficult to cut with you when you try and use tomato juice. So we use hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, and Dawn dishwashing liquid. A combination of that, we mix in a pail and we put that on clothing, cars. We can actually put it on your dog, but you want to avoid the eyes because the hydrogen peroxide could blind an animal. How, like, how thick is the fur on this skunk? Very thick. I mean, he's got, it looks very coarse and it looks like it'd be um, very rough, but it's very, very soft, very shiny. When you have a shiny coat like this and a very, a nice full coat, this is a very healthy skunk. And skunks can live in the wild up to about eight to 10 years. In captivity, not as much. I mean, normally six to seven years is about it in captivity. They just, now these guys are worked harder because they're doing programs almost every weekend. So they're stressed a little bit more. Their, their bodies aren't designed to, to last that long. How old is this skunk? This guy's just a year. So this is Ichabod and he's only about a year old. We got him when he was very tiny, about the size of his head. So we've been training him to be around people and, and act decent in public and not, not flip out. And he does a good job. What is your favorite thing about these pieces of skunk? What's my favorite? Yes. I love skunks. I've always loved, loved skunks since I was a little girl. Um, even though they smell bad, I don't mind skunk spray. I just like the fact that they're a little bit cat, a little bit dog. They use a litter box. They come when they're called. You know, if we were to put a cookie down three rooms away, his sense of smell would find that cookie. And he would come by name. So he does come when he's called. So all those things are just a really cool reason to own a skunk. And you can legally own a skunk as a pet in Pennsylvania if you buy it from a breeder and get the proper paperwork. It's, it's illegal to take it from the wild. Back to like the scent glands and stuff. 
does Ichabod have his snake glands or? He's been descended. When he was a baby, he was descended. And that's normally when you buy a pet skunk from a breeder, they're already descended. Many people want to take them out of the wild and descend them. And that's rendering a wild animal um, incapable of defending itself. That's absolutely illegal. And there shouldn't be a veterinarian in the area or in anywhere in Pennsylvania that's going to do that for you. Because that's an illegal, illegal act. So. Well, thank you so much, Angie, for telling us about Ichabod. And this oh, you're skunk. very welcome. You're very welcome. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and come back next week for some more animal education.